Here's what you've got to understand. Growth is a choice. And to be the person God wants you to be is a choice. The greatest misconception we have with God is God is some puppet master pulling at our strings. We will blame God for everything and take no responsibility for anything. We'll blame God when other people, out of their free will, wrongs us. We'll blame God when we make bad choices. Because we think God is literally like a puppet master and we have no conscience or no desires or no free will to ourselves. And what we don't realize is the greatest gift God gave you was free will, the ability to choose. He gave you the ability to choose to live whatever you want to live. And you may say, why? Why would he give you the ability to live when he knows you'll sin and when he, when he knows evil will come in and when he knows wickedness will come in? Because God understands that if he takes away your free will, he voids out his love. Because if you can't choose his love, you can't actually experience his love because love can never be forced. It can only be chosen. And so God will let you choose whatever life you want to choose. It's like the story with the prodigal and his father. You have the ability to choose to leave the father and go live however you want and make any decision you want. But you also have the ability to choose to come back to your God and come back to him. And every step of the way, he watches you leave with a broken heart and he watches you come back with an elation and a joy in his heart because he understands the only way you can truly love him is if you choose him. And you can choose whatever you want. You can choose to bring sin into your life. And remember, sin is a plethora of things. Sin is the immoral things. You could choose to live sexual immorality in relationships. You could choose to go to environments you have no business going into. You could choose to literally take and lie and cheat and steal. But also sin is any lifestyle choice you make that's apart from the will of God. So you can choose self-deprecation, and you can choose doubt, and you can choose to walk around with bitterness in your heart, and you can choose to walk around in pity, and you can choose to walk around thinking your life will never be any better. You can choose to allow all this junky furniture and all this mess into your life and fill your life. It's your choice. But you can also choose to put on the new nature of God and start changing what you fill your life with. But the only way you'll do that is if you answer one specific question. Do you truly believe that the life that God gives you is a rich and satisfying life? Or do you believe that the life that this world offers is even better? See, most people want heaven because they fear hell. They don't want heaven because they can experience it on this earth. Most people just want to escape punishment of hell, they don't realize they can have heaven colliding on this earth, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and they can experience the rich and satisfying life now. And you've got to understand the devil's trying to manipulate you with this. And he's trying to get you to see not the promises of God, but the temptations of this world. Paul says it like this in Corinthians, watch this. He says, Satan, who's the God of this world, now this is in the translation is a little g God. He's a fake God, want to be God. Has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. So when you're not believing the fullness of God and the promises of God, you're, you're blinded to it. You, don't, you just don't see it. They're unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of of God. You're missing the abundance that comes with Jesus. You're missing the abundance that comes from God. You're missing it. And what's happening is you start thinking and buying into the lies of what you see. You see what all your friend groups say. You see what they push on social media. You see what everyone else says it's quote unquote the American dream. You see what everybody else says, oh, if you do this, you'll be happy. And you start filling yourself with all this junk and then you wonder, why am I still not satisfied? Why am I still hurting? Why do I still feel broken? It's because you're blinded to the truth and believing a lie because the wolf in sheep's clothing has taken you away from God's plan. But here's the kicker. You ask Jesus to forgive you, he'll turn your life all around. 
I don't care how messy it was before. You ask Jesus to forgive you, he'll make you brand spanking new again. You decide to leave all that sin, he'll be like the prodigal father. And when you come home, he'll put a robe on you, he'll put a ring on your finger, and he'll say, my son, my daughter has come back home. But here's the kicker. You're going to have to decide what you start putting back into your life. Because you can ask Jesus to forgive you, but if you still leave that door open to your past, you're going back to the mess. You're going to have to make the decision on putting the right furniture, i.e. the right things of God, to fill your life. So what does growth look like? Growth in every aspect of your life, here's what I'm going to teach you today, consists of three things. Seed, soil, seasons. If you want to learn about growth in any aspect of your life, it's all about the seed, it's all about the soil, and it's all about the seasons in your life. I'm going to spend a lot of time on the seed. I'm going to hit all three of them, but I'm going to spend a lot of the time on the seed today. I want to talk about the seed. That's your actions. That's your behaviors. That's what you're putting into the world. That's what you're sowing into your life. That's the furniture, the decisions, the disciplines, and the rhythms of your life that you're living. You will reap what you put out there. Galatians says it like this, you always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. If you want to keep the same environment you used to have, and you want to keep behaving like you used to behave, and you want to keep with the actions and the mindsets and the disciplines of the past, you will always harvest that in your life. You will always continue to see that sprout up in your life. It is a choice on what actions, disciplines, and rhythms you choose to live. But those who live to please the Spirit, those who said, you know what, I'm going to start having spiritual disciplines and spiritual actions, and spiritual rhythms to my life, and I'm going to start living for something beyond myself, but what God has for me, you're going to harvest an everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good, because just at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. Look at your neighbor and say, you reap what you sow. Now look at your other neighbor and say, what you reaping? Don't answer that. Some of y'all going to get in trouble, okay? We're going to have a new slate after today. You always harvest what you plant. Asking Jesus into your life is the most beautiful free gift of grace the world could ever experience. But it's the starting line, not the finish line. And after you receive that forgiveness and your sins are gone, you're going to have to make a decision on what you start filling your life with. More specifically, you got to understand, I said this a couple weeks ago, write this in your notes. You can't get your external life in order when your internal life is out of order. You can't start seeing things in your life change if you're not changing the things you're putting into your life. You can't see your marriage change. You can't see your relationship with your kids change. You can't see your dreams and your purpose change. You can't see your spiritual life change if you don't start changing what you put on the inside. And here's what you've got to understand. It is your choice what you plant into your life. It's not your circumstances choice. It's not how you were raised. It's not that choice. It's not your educational background's choice. It's not whether or not you came from money or not's choice. It's not even the tragedy you experienced choice. It is 100% solely your choice what you plant. Because if that wasn't the truth, I wouldn't be standing here. If that wasn't the truth, I would be licking the wounds of my pity party. I didn't grow up in a healthy home. 
I went to 12 different schools, tossed all over this country. I didn't have a great educational background, and I didn't have a stable home. I had a mother with a mental illness. I had a father that was home maybe four days a month. I was the father figure in the home. I raised my brothers and sisters. I never knew what a childhood was. I came from poverty. I didn't get no inheritance or anybody give me a lump sum of money, and no one opened doors for me and helped me live my dreams, and no one helped me out of the tragedy and the abuse that I went through. But you know what? who did? God. Because I realized in my mother's womb, he formed me with a purpose. I was not an accident. I was not a mistake. In his book of life, he had a plan for me. And I'm his poema. I'm his masterpiece. I'm who he created to be. And I make the choice on what I'm planning in my life and what I harvest. The same is true for you. It is your choice what you plant. The problem is, is most people aren't planting the right things. Or some people aren't planting anything at all. So many people have outcome wishes with no input disciplines and they wonder why they're frustrated. So many people have all these outcomes they want. Oh, I want to live like this. I want to do this. I want to be this. I want to have this. But you got no input goals and disciplines in your life and you wonder why you're frustrated. All you do is so wishes and hopes, and you wonder why all you're doing is reaping daydreaming instead of dream living. Because there ain't no actions attached to your life. You're going to have to put some inputs in your life. You can't just have out outcomes you want. You can't just say, well, I want to be skinny. I wish you could just wish your fat away. That would be awesome. You can't just say, I want to be rich. That would be great, too. You can't just say, I want to be spiritually mature. It doesn't work that way. There has to be input goals to it. You want to be skinny, you got to put yourself on a calorie limit every day, work out several times a week to put yourself in a calorie deficit so you lose weight. Pretty simple. You want to have financial security? You're going to have to live under a budget, take your excess income, invest it in smart investments that compound over time. And if you want to spiritually grow, there are spiritual disciplines, actions, and rhythms you're going to have to do in your life that will cause spiritual growth. And these aren't spiritual disciplines that are my opinions. These are the words of Jesus, the instructions of Paul, and through studies, here's what we found. There's four very specific things that you could start doing today that will drastically cause growth in your life. I promise you, if you build this as a rhythm in your life, it will move the needle in your spiritual growth. You want to know what the four are? Yeah. Number one, reading and studying the Bible. Oh, <laughs> Pastor Mike, why you got to give me that cliche pastor answer? <laughs> of course. Next thing I know, he's going to tell me to pray. Listen to me. How can you hear the voice of God if you don't read the word of God? How can you know what the promises of God are and what lies you're living if you don't read the promises of God? The Bible, the word of God says the Bible is the light unto our path, the light to our feet. It guides you. It is a compass. God tells Joshua, he says, read the word of God meditate on the promises of God, don't deviate on them, and watch what he says, you will prosper if you do those three things. If you read, if you meditate, and you don't deviate. The Bible says the word of God is like a two-edged sword. And what does that two-edged sword do? It says it cuts away the muck and the marrow to expose who you're created to be, which means throughout your life, you accumulate a lot of junky furniture. You accumulate a lot of mess, and because you don't know the promises of God and the direction of God, and because the world is what you read and what you follow, you don't even realize it's bad. And it's, it's not until you start reading the Word of God that you start going, oh, wait, that's not supposed to be there. This is what's supposed to be here. And it's through reading the Word of God, it starts revealing who you are called and created to be. 
You've got to put this as a rhythm in your life. And not only do you need to read the Word of God, you need to meditate on the Word of God. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring ding that bell so you never miss a video or a live stream, and give this a share to one of your friends. And remember, we go live every single Sunday. Till next time, pray God's peace.